Not me. My name is Fajar. Uh, like Barrett Mer just mentioned, I was uh, one of the co-founder of Happy Press. I was actually involved with the project that uh, Aga was mentioning, which was the Star Trek Into the Darkness. I think it was pretty pretty cool project. I, I, I love it so much. And af after that, now I I I am the CTO and also co-founder of Happy Fresh, which is an online grocery service. So if you haven't tried it yet, please do. Uh, I think during this uh, pandemic and thing we are on the PSPB transition, right? Where most of you guys, are, I assume, still doing working from home. I think our service become more and more and more relevant. So just, just to give you guys a quick overview of what we do. So Happy Fresh is an online grocery service. We work with a local supermarket. For, for Indonesia, we work with Rents Market. We work with uh, Grand Lucky. I think we work with almost, I would say 90 to 90% of the supermarket in Jakarta. So basically we, we shop for you guys. We have a, a, a personal shopper that station uh, within that supermarket that takes your order. So you can order uh, from iOS, Android, and we also have a web platform, but our focus is, are still in, in mobile. Because as you know, especially in this region, I think mobile are, are, are the first, the main, uh, the main platform that people are using. So basically you can uh, select the supermarket that you want and then shop from there. And then that order, we, we send it to our uh, shopper. The shopper will then uh, pick the items and then the, the, our rider will then deliver to you. So it's very quick and easy way to, to do your uh, grocery. Uh, so just a quick overview. So we started, as we started development in 2014, end of 2014, and then launched our first service in uh, Jakarta and Kuala Lumpur, I think in March 2015. Now we are in three markets, uh, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, where in Thailand we are in, we are serving Bangkok, and in uh, Malaysia, we are serving uh, Kuala Lumpur and Penang. So just quick overview of the team itself. Our current uh, tech and product team now is about uh, 80 people uh, that are split into uh, engineers. We have uh, basically developer engineers and then we have uh, UX researcher, we have designers, we have uh, product analytics, so total around 80 people. So what I wanted to share, which is the, how we build a search experience in, in Happy Fresh, right? So there are two teams that uh, actively involve building this solution. One is our product catalog team. So our product catalog team, they are responsible for our search and browse experience, building our search uh, platform, building our browse platform, but also responsible in uh, ingesting data from our partner, which is in this case, supermarket. And I just, just to, for, for a quick overview or reiterating of how Happy Fresh works. So we don't own inventory. So we work, since we work with local supermarket, we don't have inventory, so we are uh, asset light, but we just need to ingest their data and then uh, bring them online so that our customer can, can shop. So there, there are challenges and advantages with that model, but I would not go into that uh, in this session. So the other team that were involved in building the search experience is what we call a PSN team. So PSN is, is kind of mis misleading name that the team inherited a while back. So when we started building this team, the main focus for this team is to build personalization within Happy Fresh or within our platform. Therefore, they called their team PSN, which, which translates to personalization team. But now the, 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 the role of that team becomes uh, bigger. It's not only personalization, but also 
basically solving all the uh, problem that can be solved by machine learning. So these two teams are uh, working together in building our uh, search experience. So uh, just a quick background of, of the problems or the challenges that most of e-commerce or Happy Fresh specifically uh, are facing, right? So let's say I'm a user, I'm looking for an apple, right? And then there are thousand, not, I wouldn't say thousand, but maybe hundreds of uh, apple within our platform. And it can be an apple cider, it can be an apple juice, it can be a, a baby food, it can be an apple fruit, it can be an a, a, a alcoholic beverage, and even, even it can be a, a, a hand soap that uh, smell like apple, right? And the way the way that our search engine do works is that we index the product name and the category of the product where it sits. Therefore, when you type in an apple, then documents that match to that query are documents that has a title or name or product name that has apple in it, right? That's why you can see in this in this. Uh, picture when when someone looking for an apple, these are the document that match that query, right? So, if I look at uh, how our customer are shopping, so fifty percent of our customer shopping from the search flow, meaning that they usually already have some uh, list in. It could be a physical list where they have a a piece of paper or whatever, or they, it could also be a mental list where they have everything they, they need on their head and then they come to our platform and then they search what they want, right? So that's 50% of our uh, traffic or our user come from uh, getting their product from our search engine. Because of that, this is, this is something that is very, very important for us to make sure that the search result or the relevance of the search result are quite accurate and relevant to that particular uh, user, right? So as I mentioned, we basically index uh, two things. One is the product name, which in this case, you can see Heinz apple cider is something that we index. Florida's natural apple juice is something that index. And then the category where this product sits. For example, uh, New Zealand Jumbo and Free Apple sits under uh, fresh fruits. Then the fresh fruit itself is something that we are indexing. So I don't know whether or not how familiar are you guys with, with uh, index. So index means the fields that we index is something that we can search using a text search, right? Okay. And um, so because of this, it's, it's, it's hard as you know, right, the challenge of this is from system point of view, we don't know what, what's, what's the user intention when they are searching for Apple. For people like us, which are human, we know most of the time when you search for an Apple, you are likely to search for an Apple fruit. But for system, they don't know. When, when, when user type in Apple, it can match for many things, like in this case, right? So the challenge that we have is that how can we understand or try to understand user intent by doing a uh, few things that I will explain in, in, uh, in, in my next slide, right? So just, just to re re reiterate how uh, basic uh, search works. For example, if I type in uh, milk for our use case, then every document or products that has product name that has milk in it will match that query. Also, all the products within the milk category will match to that query term, right? Just to make sure that everyone understands. Okay. So again, what what what's what we're trying to do, right? Based on that, based on this, which is the system, they don't know how what's the context, what the user is looking for. Then what we're trying to do, we understand the user intent, what what their intention is when they are typing for Apple. We, therefore, we can show relevant products. 
and we do not show irrelevant products or in, in, in some cases we want to deboost it. Deboost meaning that we want to put them or rank them very low. Therefore, in the first and second and third page, they probably not appearing. So if you look at uh, if you look at Google search, right? Most of the time, people only uh, stay or only uh, go to the first page. That's because the relevancy is so so uh, accurate or so relevant to the user. They don't need to go to the next page. So that's what we're trying to do, right? How can we uh, make our first page very relevant to what the user is looking for? So. There are a couple of algorithm or, or, or logic or mechanics that we are that we're using in order to accomplish uh, the challenge that, that we have there, meaning that how can we uh, create a search result that is very relevant to the query that the user is, is searching. So there are five, uh, five strategy or five, uh, five things that we currently doing. So one is what we call product product type boost, and two what we call synonym expansion, three user history boost, number four popular product boost, and number five is uh, learn to rank. So not all of them are uh, using uh, ML approach, but uh, some of them are using ML approach. So I will I will try to go into uh, detail in each one of them. So the first one is the product type boost, right? So product type boost, the goal is uh, very simple. The goal is we want to re-rank the search result using pop pro popular product type to boost more relevant product groups. Num uh, second goal is we want to reduce ir irrelevant search result. So just, just a quick overview of what we mean by product type. So Let's say we have uh, a lot of products, right? And then uh, basically we work with supermarket, we digitalize their, their uh, products. And then during the digitalization process, we have a team that basically look into uh, the physical products and then try to categorize or what we call product tagging, basically uh, looking into what's the product name, what category is this product sold fall into, what's the weight, what's the height, what's the dimension. And then one thing that we, we also try to tag is the product type. So product type is the, it's a hierarchy structure where we try to group the product based on uh, a product, based on its type. I'll give you an example, let's say, uh, go back to the uh, NV, this NV, New Zealand or New Zealand Jumbo NV Apple, right? So in this case, the product type is uh, red apple, which means we have the, the structured data where we can get all the, the red apple, where New Zealand Jumbo NV is one of them. So we do this manually, and it's a quite in, uh, labor intensive uh, process in doing this. And we do have quite a lot of uh, assortment. So I think we're, we have the largest assortment within Southeast Asia. We have uh, around 200,000 uh, 200, SKUs. I think most of supermarkets, they have around 20 to 30,000 SKUs. Okay. So the, the data points that we need in order to accomplish this uh, approach one is query conversion. What we mean by query conversion is that, so let's say a user type in the apple and then after they type in apple, he or she selected a particular apple, then we record or track that as a conversion of that particular query, which is apple. So this apple query convert to this particular product. And then we also, based on that data, we rank uh, the the popular product type based on the add to cart events that I just mentioned. So basically the data set that we have, we will have a set of uh, 
products that has a good conversion, which match to a particular search query term. And then based on the, those product, we group, uh, we group the products based on the product types to know the ranking of the product type. So just, just to, give, to give you a quick overview of how uh, product type boost works. So before I go into that, so just a quick overview of uh, how our search, uh, search platform works. So we have search service here. So our search service is built uh, using Go. And then we have uh, our another layer of service, which, which we call or or Orion. So Orion is our personalization and ML engine that will return uh, something to the search surface so that it can communicate to our search engine, which is, uh, so we are using an, uh, uh, an elastic, elastic, uh, I would say, service. So it's not. So it's built on top of Elastic Search. It's called uh, App Search, which is which is part of an Elastic uh, suite. So we use that. So based on that, then we push all the parameters to that uh, search engine to get the relevant uh, to get the result. So to give you overview of. Uh, how this works, right? So when user type in Apple, uh, it goes to our search service, then our search service will request uh, to Orient to see whether or not there is what kind of product type uh, scoring that I have, right? And based on the query itself, then Orion will, will send the score, which we'll then use in our app search or uh, search engine. Then, the result that the user have is for in this case for Apple, they will get all the Apple within fresh fruit product type, all apples within fresh fruit juice, and all apple within fresh fruit baby food. And this is because of the product boosting that we have. So this is kind of fix the scattered uh, the, the scattered uh, picture that I just showed you in the earlier slide where user type in Apple, there's so many type of apples, right? So with this, on the first page, he or she will probably see some, uh, some uh, apple fruits, some apple juice, and some baby food. So this is a very simple approach, but quite effective for us in boosting products that customer is looking for. And this is also quite effective in uh, the boosting product that are irrelevant. For example, in this Apple example, there are uh, a soap, uh, a type of soap with Apple in the name. In this case, that particular one will be the boost very low because of the score become very low. Okay, the next. So the next uh, approach that we use is uh, synonym expansion. So the goal of uh, synonym expansion is one, we want to expand our query, meaning that this is a very uh, Indonesian use case where the, the, the meaning of aqua can be multiple in, in Bahasa Indonesia, right? Aqua means a brand of mineral water, but most of the time we, when we want, uh, we want to drink or we want to buy mineral water, we said aqua, right? So aqua could also mean mineral water. So what we want to achieve here is we, when someone or our user type in aqua, we also want to match it to mineral water. And the second goal that we want to do, which is similar to the first one, if we want to reduce irrelevant search due to loose text search, right? And the second one, we want to handle typo. Uh, as you know, the way that yogurt are spelled can be multiple, right? Can be, so English, I think this one, I think this one is, I don't know who spelled this, but a lot of people are spelling this one too. At least this is what we get from the result. So we want to be able to also, when you type in yogurt, it also match to the yogurt with H. 
So what we do here, so basically we based on the, uh, what we do here based on the user history data, which is in this case, we have aqua that converts to aqua air mineral, which is the brand aqua, and then air minimum, which is, uh, which is match. When we say match, it means convert. So when, when user type in air minimum, they ended up buying this particular uh, aqua uh, bottle. So based on the query, based on the search history data, we convert it into sentences, which is this one. And then we have uh, our word to fact model that we train using these uh, sentences. And then this model we then will then output uh, uh, a word factor. This is the word uh, example of the word factor. And then based on the proximity of the word factor, then we, we, we have a candidate of the synonym, right? So based on the candidates, we try it in, in, in production. If the performance is, is good, then we, we promote it as a, as, a vinyl, as a vinyl synonym. So the benefit of doing this is that, yes, we can do synonym uh, manually. For example, we can go into our system and then create synonym uh, aqua also match to uh, air mineral. But then it's not scalable, right? So the way that we're thinking, how can we make this scalable? And we ended up with this solution. So going back to the uh, diagram, which is similar to the one before, so when user type in aqua, it goes to our search service and then our search service will pass, in, pass on to Orion and then Orion will then return back the synonym, which in this case, aqua and air mineral. And then those aqua and air mineral will then send to our search engine based on uh, the, the suggestion that the Orion uh, system have, whether or not to use R or N when we search for aqua and air mineral. So all the logic are, are done in, in, in our uh, Orion system here. So when we first uh, launched this uh, approach or this, this uh, implementation, the outcome is, is quite good. So we get an uplift about 8% uh, after the first release, but then gradually it increased over time. So this is a quite, uh, quite success for our team rolling out this one is there is no manual uh, generating of synonym. And the second one is we, we also be able to, to, to create synonym on the, on the fly so that use cases like, uh, like aqua and air mineral can be, give me one second. Sorry guys, it's it's the privilege of working from home and having three kids. Okay, uh, so another thing that, that we get from this, right? Um, so since we are using a, a, a tag search uh, and the the way that we we are using our tag search is quite loose, meaning that when you search for Apple, pineapple would also uh, be in the part of result set. So by using this synonym, we know when user is searching Apple, then it's definitely Apple. Therefore, we can uh, like, not turn off the, we can strict the, 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 or we can turn off the loose, the, the loose search by using a strict search. Therefore, it reduces the, the result set. Therefore, it, it uh, translate to higher conversion because user will then see much less search result and 
the, the one that they see is only the one that are relevant to this to the query terms itself okay another one is uh, user history boost so what we what we're trying to do here is we want to personalize the result so basically when i search for an apple i might uh, most of the time i buy uh, apple malang therefore ideally when when i search the next time i search for an apple apple malang should be at the very top or should be at the first uh, of the search result right so the user history boost is trying to achieve that goal so what we're doing here is basically we index uh, what people are buying and based on uh, what they're buying and their what what conversion that they have on that particular query term then user will then see different user will then see a different uh, search result so for example in this case let's say I always buy uh, Apple Malang. So when I search for Apple, then Apple Malang would be at the top because we have the data that I often uh, buy uh, Apple, Apple Malang when I search for an Apple. So this is also not using a machine learning approach. This is simply, uh, Basically, we keep track uh, the the historical data of the user when they when they search something, what it matches to, when they search what converts to. So based on that data, we then build the user history to boost the relevancy of the search result. Okay, the next one is uh, popularity boost. So popularity boost, so the way that our uh, search engine works is that the more we know our data, the better rele relevancy that the user will get, right? So basically it's very simple. The more data we have from the user behavior, the smarter or we can give more relevance product uh, or search result to the user, right? So popularity boosts are uh, are designed to solve the problem where we don't have enough data for the user. For example, user just uh, downloaded our app, trying to uh, search for an, an apple, which apple we sh should we uh, give to them, right? So what we do here is based on uh, the popularity of uh, each apple, we show or we rank based on the popularity. So the, the data points that we have that we need here is the uh, the popular products. So popular product meaning that products that people or other user are buying. Popular products also means that products that people are viewing. So of course there are different weight between uh, product that people bought and product that people view. So we we are taking that into consideration. So similar, uh, basically the popularity boosting live in our search engine. So this is something that we are also indexing, similar to our user history. So this one, we don't need uh, anything from our Orion service. So basically based on a particular uh, search, based on that search, then we boost or we order based on the popularity of that products. Okay, so learn to rank is something that, uh, so we are in our first iteration of our learn to rank model. And we've been working this, I think for about a month or two now, it's already, a, uh, we are doing A-B testing in, in, in production now to see the performance of, of this model. So the thing with, with uh, ML model, right? You always need to be able to evaluate the performance of the model and then fit that uh, uh, data back into to the model itself. So what we do usually when we want to try to launch uh, a new model, 
we do, we run an A-B test and then one with without that model and the other one with the model and then try to see if we, if we get the outcome that we are looking for. If not yet, then we tweak the model and then if, if we get uh, the result or the outcome that we are looking for, then we turn it on for everyone. So the way that the way that our learn to run work is that so we have uh, add to cart uh, historical data we have order historical data and we also have historical data of what uh, what product that a user are viewing right so based on this data we are using uh, sgboost and lambda mart for the algorithm to kind of re-rank the first result based on the data that fit into that model or being trained to that model. And based on that, we only uh, re-ranking the, 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 uh, the first page. In our case, the ideal scenario is that when I search for something, then the first top three uh, result are the one that I'm looking for. So the goal for this team is to have a conversion from product one to product three. So learn to rank is, is basically another layer to, to kind of get to that uh, goal. So just a quick overview of how uh, our learn to rank uh, technology are, are technology and flow works. So we, we are using Qball. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Qball. So Qball basically a, a data infrastructure as a service. So basically you can run uh, any big data uh, tools there. You can run Presto, you can run uh, Hive, you can run pretty much everything. And then we run, uh, we have a data pipeline and then we have a model that is running on a SageMaker, which is, so SageMaker is, is a data model or it's not a, it's a full, it's an end-to-end -end, uh, machine learning environment or ecosystem that Amazon or AWS provide, which lets uh, ML engineer and data scientists uh, can easily test and run uh, their model without uh, needing to, to set up the infrastructure. So we are have, we, we heavily using SageMaker and we, in this case, we are using SageMaker to kind of get the output of the model itself. So putting all together, right? So the goal here is we want to be able to rank the, the search result as, as relevant as possible. And we also want to reduce the irrelevant search result and we want to de it. We want to de the, the product that are not relevant. So when, when, when user search in Apple, let's assume that that user is logged in and that user are shopping in store A, then we run through this form mechanics, which is popular product uh, type boost, the synonym uh, boost, the user history boost and product popularity boost. And we run this uh, for uh, algorithm and then we get a set of uh, result. On the first page of the search result, then we run our learn to rank uh, algorithm, which will then re-rank or not the first page of what the user see. And the final result is, is what you will see when you type in like Apple or Aqua or, or uh, Indomie in, in our platform. So the, 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 the conversion uplift that we get from all this effort is, is, is quite uh, significant. So we have about around 18% uh, uplift after, after we implemented all of this. And we, we continuously improve this, this, this effort, meaning we keep improving the model, we keep improving the approach, and then the, since the data getting, the more data we get and the more, the better the, the model is also performing, right? 
So what's next? Uh, so what's next? So this is a example of when a user looking for a Pantene sample, right? So we want to be able to extract the product attribute or the the from the sentence. We want to be able to extract what are the type of or what are what are the attributes of that particular sentence. For example, Pantene. We want to be able to extract it as a brand and then shampoo we want to be able to extract it as a product type why because as, as i mentioned earlier right the way that we index our uh, our document or our products is based on product name and then everything else is 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 in that product name so if we are able to extract this then our search query can also be more uh, strict. We can, in, in this case, we the, the, the query that we will send to the search engine instead of Pantene shampoo, we will send get me uh, products that has brand equal to Pantene and the product type equals to shampoo. In this case, we will get much more relevant product uh, from the, the search engine itself. So that's uh, something that we are working on now. Another thing that we are working on is, uh, I think I mentioned earlier that the effort that we have, that the effort that we need to do in order to extract product information from uh, a product is quite labor intensive, right? We need to get the product name, we need to get the dimension, we need to get the product description, we need to get all of those things, right? So now uh, our PSN team, they are working on uh, OCR model where we want to extract the product information by looking at the image. So the ideal scenario or the outcome that we want to achieve is by, by looking at, by, by giving an input of this product uh, picture, we will get a shampoo as the product type Pantene as the as the brand, we get the packaging which is bottle, we get the scent which is C, we get the ingredients. This way, the product information can become richer, right? The richer the product, then the more things that you can do because you have more data points. So the more relevancy that you can give to the to the customer. I think that's it for for my talk.